Thanks for stopping by. Today, I'm going to show you how to tune up your miter saw. This is my miter saw. It's a Makita 12 inch sliding compound double bevel miter saw. Yours might look a little bit different, might have different colors, but it's okay. Everybody's is a little bit different, but in the end, they all do the same thing. Step one, unplug it. Next thing, get your shop vac and get everything cleaned up. After you get everything cleaned up, take the time to lubricate all your pivot points, your springs, and things like that. Um, if you have any suggestions or some product that you like to use on your miter saw, put it in the comments down below. I'd like to know what you use. If you're not sure what to use, just look in the manual that came with your saw. I'm sure they'll recommend a lubricant. The next thing you need to do is make sure that your fence is straight. I'm gonna be using my Johnson level. I just checked it on my table saw. Those two things are supposed to be straight. I can't see light underneath the level when it's sitting on the table saw. So either they're both bent or they're both straight. I'm gonna go with they're both straight. Um, if you don't have a four foot level or you have one that's banged up, you could use the factory edge of a piece of plywood that's generally pretty straight, but you're gonna need something that's straight. First thing I want you to notice is I took the auxiliary fences off. We don't need them for most of this. Just to get them out of the way, it's better to not have them. Put your straight edge up against your fence going all the way across both sides and just make sure that there's not a gap. You can use a feeler gauge or a piece of paper here, but you need this to be straight all the way along here. Most of them are one piece that goes all the way across from one side to the other. And to adjust them, you need to loosen up the screws in the back and tweak the fence a little bit because you can bend this slightly if your fence isn't straight all the way across. On mine, these are the two screws you loosen up to adjust the fence and it's the same on the other side. Yours might be slightly different, but just check your manual to see how to adjust the fence if that's something you need to do. Now that we've made sure our fence is straight, we can go ahead and set our saw up to make sure our 90 degree cuts are truly 90. For that, you need to know what your saw's maximum cutting capacity is, and you're gonna need two pieces of wood that are about the size of that maximum cutting capacity. Some people show doing this step with one piece of wood. Let me show you why that's not a good idea. I've watched quite a few videos where people will say, take a wide piece of wood and cut it in half, and then take the piece that you cut off, flip it over, and if they match up, you have a good 90 degree adjustment. The problem with doing it that way is if this edge is not parallel to this edge, it's gonna throw off what you get as a miter here. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with two pieces of wood that's more accurate. Take a board with a good straight edge and put it up against your fence right near where the cut is going to be. And if you have your clamp, it's a good idea to use that to hold it down. Now when we cut this board, this angle right here should end up being a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna mark this board so we know what it is. Now we're gonna take our second board and do the same thing. And it's a good idea to turn on your shop vac before you make the cut. So we have our two test pieces cut and we should, if the saw is accurate, have 90 degree angles here and here. You'll notice I haven't pulled out my combination square or a machinist square or anything like that. You don't need it. What we need to do is put these two joints up against each other along a straight edge and see if they match. If these are exactly 90, the joint should match perfectly. So all we need to do is put them like this and flip this one over so this matches this. It's a better idea if you can do this on your cast iron table saw if you have one, but I'm gonna use my level. I'm confident it's straight enough and we're just gonna put these up against each other. I'm pretty sure you can see this. I have a pretty big gap down here and it's butted up against each other here and I'm up against the level. 
all along here so my straight edge so my miter saw is definitely out it's cutting at an angle like this so I need to bring the saw this way a little bit be a good idea if I could measure this and the best tool to do that would be a feeler gauge if you have one I happen to have one so that's what I'm going to use if you don't have it you can get by without it so let me measure this and see how bad it is Okay, so my measurement down here between these two pieces of wood is about 60 thousandths but that represents double the error because I'm using two pieces of wood so I need to adjust my saw 30 thousandths this way most saws nowadays get adjusted the same way you have all these numbers on this gauge here and there's some screws and you can loosen these screws up and that will allow you to move the saw around your saw might need to be adjusted differently so check your owner's manual if you don't just have these screws here so now that I know my gap is too big back down here at this point I need to adjust the saw so it's cutting more out here so and I measured it if you didn't measure it you can just kind of do this by feel and keep making your test cuts but I need to have about a 30 thousandths gap back here and the saw just touching out here and of course make sure you're unplugged for this part if you are using feeler gauges make sure you're measuring off the teeth and not off the saw blade body you want to measure off of the teeth and just a little tweaking here and there until you get it where you think it's right Right, that feels good to me. I'm going to snug everything up and do another test cut. All right, for me, I'm going to call that good. One thing I neglected to mention earlier is even though we now have this cut here set at 90 degrees, if the bevel of the saw isn't adjusted right, the cut could be like this or like this. So even when you flip this over, it could be showing you some kind of error here. So we need to set the bevel on our saw. We're going to do that next. Now that we have this piece of wood cut that we verified is 90 degrees, we can use this to set our fence. I'm lucky enough I have a little allen screw in the back that I can use to adjust the fence but just check your manual and do whatever it says so that you have a good 90 degree between your back fence and your table to make sure our bevel angle is set at zero we're gonna do the same thing we did to set the miter angle we're gonna cut two pieces of wood they're just gonna be a little bit smaller they're gonna be the width of the maximum cutting height of your miter saw mine's about four inches so you just need two pieces of wood with a straight edge along the bottom and we're going to make two cuts and see how they match up. Here's the two boards I just cut. Just like before, we're going to flip one of them over, put them against the straight edge and bring them together. And I'm just slightly open at the bottom so my saw is tipped this way so I need to bring it back like this just a tiny bit to make your adjustment the first thing you want to do is loosen up the lock for your bevel on the Makita it's right here in the front just loosen this up a little bit and now I can make the adjustment make sure your saw is unplugged before you start digging around in there and on the Makita, the adjustment screw is in this hole here. Check your manual to see where the adjustment for your bevel stop is. And just put an Allen wrench in here and just give it a little tweak. And let me try it again. Took me a couple of tries, but I think that's pretty good. It's nice and tight. And I think the bevel's set at zero. One more thing left to adjust. The last adjustment to make is the 45 degree bevel stop. And on my saw, I have to take the fence off. Some of them, you can just slide it back out of the way because you're going to be tipping the saw and the blade will hit the fence if you don't. 
also want to make sure that you have the board clamped down because you have a lot of forces at work here. It's going to try and pull the board this way. It's also going to push it back. So clamp it down and make sure that before you start anything that your clamp's not going to be in the way of your cut. This is obviously not the right clamp for this type of operation, but I didn't get the right clamp for this saw yet. Once you make two cuts, you're going to take your two 45 degree pieces and your known good 90 degree, whether you're going to use the piece of wood from before or a framing square that you know is good, and just check all the joints. And lucky for me, I have uh, one setting on my saw that doesn't need to be adjusted. The 45 is nice and straight, it's tight and it fits the 90 perfectly. This Allen screw right here is the adjustment for the 45 stop on the Makita and again your saw might be a little bit different. Once you get your 45 degree bevel set your saw is done unless of course you have a saw that bevels to the right then you want to adjust the 45 degree bevel on the other side. Simple way to adjust your miter saw with just a couple of scraps of wood no dial indicator nothing like that. Once you're all finished, put your saw back to zero, put your miter back to zero, and adjust all your little arrows wherever they are back to zero, and then you should be good to go. I'd love to hear your comments on this video, and two things in particular I'm interested in. The first one is zero clearance on the miter saw. I recently saw a tape that you can put right across the throat here and just make a cut through the tape, and it's specifically designed for this. I'm wondering if anybody's tried that and did it work out okay for you. And the second thing is, and something I didn't cover in this video is, what about the miter cuts at 45 degrees? How do you adjust that? There's no positive stops. The only thing I can think to do if that's off, since we've already set it at zero with the gauge in the front, is to slightly file the notches on one side or the other where the wedge catches it and get your 45 set that way. How do you deal with that? Let me know. Thanks for watching. I've watched quite a few videos where people will say take a wide piece of wood and cut it in half with the saw. I've watched I've watched quite a few videos where people will say take Is it recording? I don't even know.